What is up, my friends? You are all very, very welcome along to tonight's Late Night Agenda. It is Thursday, if I'm right. Quick glance at the computer. Yes, it is Thursday. I hope you're all in great spirits. We've done it. We've survived the international break together. And we've got a lot of football to look forward to. Liverpool taking on Brighton this weekend. Sheffield United midweek. And then a little trip to Old Trafford for the annual three points for Manchester United. So loads to get through tonight. We're going to be giving you the latest on Liverpool's search for a manager. Injury updates uh, for some key players. A little bit of a laugh at Manchester City's expense because, well, you know, tin pot and all that. And loads of other bits and pieces. But as always, you drive the show. You let us know the topics you want us to discuss in what order. And I'm here to serve. Brian, straight in. Boom. Look at that. We're not even... Five minutes on and he's in 50 gifted subs from Brian. Absolute legendary stuff, Sarah. Thank you. Again, very disappointed I didn't get over to meet Brian in person again in Boston. But appreciate the support, sir, as always. And uh, we've got Vegas to look forward to, right? So, amazing. Thank you, Brian. What a great start to this evening's stream. Thank you so much. Uh, Colin, lovely to see you in as well, my friend. Said, hey, man, stopping in to say hi. Hope you're well. I am good. A little bit under the weather. I have a bit of a cold, but not too bad that I can't work, you know. But happy to be here, my man. Izzy as well. To celebrate the end of a very painful international break. Thank you, Izzy. Yeah, look, it's... They're tough, aren't they? I hate these international breaks. They, they seem to go on forever. But the good news... But well, the good news is we're closing in. And the preview for the game against Brighton will be coming out tomorrow at 6 o'clock. So I'll be looking forward to your reactions for that one. Obviously, I'll be giving you score predictions, predicted 11s and everything else. And uh, yeah, let's look. Let's start off tonight with a little bit of a giggle about Manchester City. Because, well, you know, they like to tell the world that they're a huge club, right? They like to tell the world that... Um, that they're growing and that they're a monster of a club. You know, the, the generating of money, the, the fans around the world, the trophy tours. But what you can't hide, what you can't hide is facts. And I'm going to give you a little fact in a moment that will show you exactly how tin pot Manchester City are. Uh, Brian, wow, gee. I nearly swore. Wow, Brian, that's a $499 super chat. That's the record smashed. Oh my goodness, need to recoup your Boston expenses. I, I, wow, I mean that's, uh, I don't know what to say there, Brian. Um, I'm very rarely short of words, but oh my God, that's incredible. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what else to say. I'm honestly in shock. Um, did not expect that on a Thursday evening quiet stream, but... There you go. Absolute hero, Brian. Thank you. And look, the Boston thing, mate, as you know, that was on me. We made a visa mistake. I'm big enough to take these things on the chin, but uh, absolute legend. Thank you. So I want to get stuck into the Manchester City thing because there was a post that somebody alerted me to on uh, X. Now, I'm not on there, but somebody sent me a screenshot of it. So as you guys know, getting tickets for an away European game is very difficult. Um, it's hard enough to get tickets to a home game to watch Liverpool, but getting tickets to a quarter-final away against Real Madrid, well, that would be near impossible. But the good news is, not if you're a Manchester City fan. So as I'm sure you're aware, the qualification to be able to get tickets to a Liverpool away game in Europe means you have to have attended pretty much nearly every away game that season, and maybe even in seasons previously. So you're asking yourself right now, well, Craig, Manchester City are playing Real Madrid over in Madrid. Surely it's going to be difficult for Manchester City fans to get tickets. No. Here's the qualifying criteria to be eligible to buy tickets for Manchester City's away leg against Real Madrid. Uh, any citizens, match day members and junior members registered before the 15th of March 2024. End. <laughs> that's, that's the criteria. That's... I mean... I, I'm... What do you say to that? Do you know what I mean? You've got people who travelling all around Europe trying to watch Liverpool who can't get to some of these type of occasions. And Manchester City in the quarterfinals of the Champions League in Madrid, you merely just have to be a member before the 15th of March to, uh, to qualify to be able to buy those tickets. So um, that actually weirdly qualifies me because when Liverpool were playing Manchester City many years ago, we 
registered because we wanted to try and sneak in. So yeah, many of you will probably have already been qualified for that. But there you go. Huge club though. Port me point that out, you know, massive club, definitely legitimate sponsorship, definitely legitimate numbers. Definitely not trying to cut anyone there. But there you go. So you know, next time you're feeling a bit down about not being able to get Liverpool tickets, just remember how hard it is for those Manchester City fans. The fact they even call themselves citizens in the email is a bit cringy as well. But, uh, Carl, how are you, mate? Thank you for your 32 months membership post. Wow, that's incredible. I uh, hope you and the family are well. We're good, thank you, Carl. Uh, very good, actually. All going well. Uh, hey, Craig, love to you and your family. Doug, uh, right back to you and your family as well, sir. Hope uh, life as a daddy and mammy is treating you well. And, uh, yeah, treasure these years, mate, because they're special. As I'm sure you know, I know you're both great parents and lots of love to you both. Or to the three of you, I should say now. Spurs and Arsenal are bigger clubs than City. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, Craig, go buy tickets. No, because I tried my best to not watch Manchester City. So I did get something really good sent to me. Pictures of Trent Alexander-Arnold running at the AXA training facility. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is great news. So Trent looks like he's closing in on a return. Um, will it be this weekend? I doubt it. But you never know. But we do have lots of updates on this one as well. So, here's where we are with injuries at the moment. Uh, we know that Darwin Nunes and we know that Ryan Gravenberg are absolutely okay and ready to go for the weekend. Both of them rested up, didn't take part in international duty. Good to go. There's a little bit of, I don't want to say concern over Ibrahim and Kanadi, because the truth is, I don't know. But there's a little bit of... Mystique, yeah, that's the best word I can think of at the moment. Because he wasn't pictured in a lot of the training pictures today. Now, I've got to say, personally, the whole Canada situation and the international break really did wind me up. The fact that he was unable to play for us on the Sunday against Manchester United, but was absolutely sound to go over to the French squad, be on the bench for their first game and play 90 minutes of the second game, I've got to be honest with you, that doesn't sit well with me. Now, I'm not having a go with the player in this scenario. No, not at all. I absolutely understand Ibu would, would want to represent his country. No issues with that. My issue here is, how is that allowed? How can he not be ready to play for us on the Sunday, but on the Monday be able to be dragged over and be put into the French squads? Again, I ask you, what is the point in these pathetic international breaks that don't really have any meaning to a lot of them right now because it's not a qualifying tournament. It's just friendlies. It just doesn't sit well with me. So he wasn't pictured in training today. But as of right now, I really don't know what the situation is with Ibu. I presume he's going to be okay because we haven't heard uh, anything to the contrary. And also Curtis Jones looks like he could be available for selection this weekend as well. So we are starting to get bodies back, which is good news. Alison Becker, still no date there confirmed by anybody. Diogo Jota looks like he should be uh, ready to go for the Manchester United game April 7th. Uh, Joel Matip, I mean, great news on Joel Matip. Joel Matip is running at AXA now, out on the grass doing a little bit, which is brilliant considering how serious the ACL injury he had was. Again, he won't be back playing by the end of the season, but for his own future in his career, great news to hear that Joel's out on the pitch doing a little bit of work. Um... Missed up to now recap on Alonso. We haven't gotten anywhere near speaking about Alonso yet, mate. We're still doing the uh, the introduction part of tonight's stream. So don't worry, you haven't missed out on anything regarding Ruben Amarim or Xabi Alonso. And I will get on to it. Just one little thing. I want to run a poll tonight for the first time this evening. But it's a, it's one with a, it's a little bit different. So TalkSport have posted something that shows that Michael Owen insists that he was better than fellow Liverpool legend Robbie Fowler. Well, first and foremost, they've got that wrong. Because to me and many Liverpool fans I know, only one of them is a Liverpool legend. The other one's a Manchester United legend. So firstly, you weren't. And secondly, I want to ask you guys. Who do you rank as the bigger legend? Let's get a poll going here. Because I I respect Michael Owen and he was a great footballer. But when I think of Liverpool legends, I know which one of them is called God and which one of them isn't. So for me, I very much disagree with Michael Owen. But who was better for Liverpool? Let's ask. So I'm going to get a poll up there. One second. We'll leave this running in the background while we go through the manager uh, information, stuff like that. So, I'm going to ask you, who was better for Liverpool? In seconds. Fowler. 
Owen. Right, you guys can vote away. Cool, there we go. Who was better? Have your say. Um, right, a couple of super chats I have to get to before I forget to get to them. One second. Uh, live at Liverpool vlog for Jurgen's goodbye parade, said Arthur Smith. Actually, I will be in Liverpool, but it will be before that. I hope and should be there for his last European game at Anfield because I feel like it's fitting. I was at Jurgen's first European game at Anfield and... I feel like getting to his last one is going to be cool. So I'm hopeful I'm going to be over there for the semi-final second leg, if indeed we get past Atalanta. Uh, that I pretty much confirm I'll be there for that one. So looking forward to that. Uh, just wanted to let you know I appreciate you, mate. Let's get it this weekend. All we need is Alison Becker, said Leon. That is so kind, mate. And I love that you call me mate as well, because that's exactly how I think of yourself, Leon, and everybody else in the chat. So well in. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, and yes, we do need Alison Becker. But i got to say, Queveen's doing quite well. And um, his scores have been really good from our friends at SofaScore as well. I mean, you may not have seen it, but SofaScore have put out uh, listings of the rankings of players this season and their average scores. And Queveen Kelleher's done quite well. Now, of course, if you want to download SofaScore, you can do so with the QR code on the screen or the link in the description. I'll leave that poll on Fow Fowler and Owen running for a while so you guys can have your say on it. But I can already see that you guys are of a similar mindset to myself. Uh, hello Craig, how was Sabrina's first day? It wasn't her first day today, um, she went down to be measured for her uniform today and I kid you not, they said to her, we're going to have to order specialist size PPE equipment for you because you're tinty winty. So I said to her, look, I can help out here, the fire brigade, all they have to do is go to the Build-A-Bear workshop and they'll be able to get everything Sabrina needs for her uniform. But yeah, no, she's good, thank you. Um, Happy. And also, I can confirm, I don't want to give you too much information yet, but I can confirm we are coming to Belfast. Anfield Agenda is rocking up to Belfast. Details will be coming out over the next week. Uh, the venue want to announce it with us at the same time, so we're hanging off. But we are going to be in Belfast. And I can give you a date. We'll be there 31st of May in Belfast with a possible Dublin show coming shortly afterwards. And then we'll be over to the UK for August for a couple of shows. But we did book that in today and I will give you more details soon. So Anfield Agenda, we are coming to Belfast May 31st. Hope to see you there. Right, let's get cracking. Right, the managerial situation. Oh, Benjamin put in a super sticker. Benjamin, thank you, mate. Very kind of you. Uh, let's get to the managerial situation. So... We'll start off with a little word, as we like to, our daily Florian Plettenberg update. So, Florian Plettenberg put out an exclusive, he said, exclusive with Max Erbel, the new Bayern boss, about to uh, schedule in the search for a coach. As soon as possible, we're now entering April, said Max Erbel. It would be nice if we could manage it in April without having an ultimate day. If it takes longer, it takes longer. We want to make the best decision. And Florian Plettenberg finished this post by saying, Xabi Alonso remains the absolute desired solution. A top candidate, should Alonso decline, is Roberto De Zerbi. And then he went on to say the entire interview will be live in Sky Germany at half past seven. Um, I already see him starting to backtrack here a little bit because I think Mr. Plettenberg's finally starting to get the idea that maybe Xabi Alonso won't be going to Bayern Munich. Now, I still don't know if he's going to depart Leverkusen or not. That's something that a lot of people don't know the answer to. But it is thought that Xabi Alonso was going to make his decision in three to four weeks' time. That's what's been posted by many members of the media, including, and I want to get this right, uh, Guillaume Balagay, who said... Xabi Alonso is determined to decide his future in the next three to four weeks. Nothing has been decided yet. And that, I believe, to be true. See? See, Florian? See how easy it is to be a credible journalist? Guillaume Balaguer just said the truth that nobody knows yet. Oh, my God. Barry's in. Barry's... <laughs> Lads, come on now. This is mental. Chipping into Sabrina's build a -Bear uniform fund, said Izzy. Thank you, Izzy. Uh, Barry him with a £300 super chat. My God. Lads. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say because obviously I'm eternally grateful. But I also, I, I, and I know Brian's situation. And I know Brian's okay. But Barry, please don't ever stretch yourself around like that, mate. Not saying you are. I don't know your personal finances. But thank you. So, so much, mate. It's really, really kind of you. I don't know what we've done to deserve 
lads like yourself, um, Brian, many others as well in the chat who've been really kind. That is so, so appreciated, dude. Thank you. Uh, he said, Ditto Brian sentiment, mate. Hope this helps ease the blow a bit. Much love. It, it does, mate, and it means a lot. And like I said, it was my fault, uh, our fault, I should say, on the paperwork. Uh, we all know the rules of getting in and out of America are tough and you have to make sure everything's right. And um, I will say that Homeland Security were firm but fair and it was just an annoying situation. But I hope to get it resolved for Vegas in October. Uh Sabrina, slap you uh, for shit like that or just point to the sofa. Nah, she wouldn't respect me, Liz, if I didn't give her banter, you know? She wouldn't respect me, mate. Leon! Wow! Leon saying, let it rain. <laughs> I'm looking down. <laughs> I'm looking down and it says chat revenue because the back end system on YouTube shows this. It shows 903 euro and we've been on, what, 27, 17 minutes. Lads. I mean, this was supposed to be a quiet Thursday evening stream. You're all crazy, but I love it. Thank you so, so much. I, I'm going to say it again. Don't know what I've done, we've done to deserve this type of support, but my God, we appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Barry, Brian, Leon, everybody else. Incredible. So on the Alonso situation, three to four weeks, that's when we're going to get an answer. But there's been a lot of chatter over the last day or two about Ruben Amorim. Um, personally, I think he's second on the list and if Alonso decides to stay at Leverkusen or doesn't um come across I think it will be Amarum that they'll go after and I'll give you more information on that in a second but I got to go back down because JC has dropped in and he said oops and he's dropped a hundred dollar super chat JC absolute legend man thank you uh Leon's in again with an 83 quid one now we're flying we're over we're over a grand you absolute legend thank you my god I feel like um I feel like a stripper now in the club, you know, shaking my goods, shaking my wares. Uh, I wouldn't be making a grand though if I was a stripper, I promise you. The exits would be flying open. So, Benjamin Parker, thank you. JC, much love, man, as you know. Um, thank you for your kindness. And Leon, VRP as well, absolute superstars. Thank you all. Incredible amount. Um, nudes will be in the post. Right, so... Joe Polina has been speaking about Ruben Amorim, who, of course, he worked with at Sporting Lisbon. Um, and he said, Ruben has a lot of quality, one of the best in Portugal. Polina said to Portuguese outlet Ojogo, he's done an excellent job. He's got in-depth knowledge and has a close relationship with his players. The way he's growing, he won't be in Portugal for much longer. He added, uh, is he capable of taking over at Liverpool? Yes, of course. The pressure is different. When you coach Liverpool, you have pressure from the fans, the club, the whole world. I think it will be a matter of time. Now, I think he meant it'll be a matter of time before he coaches in the Premier League, but maybe he meant he thinks it'll be a matter of time before he's coaching Liverpool. So tonight I wanted to ask the question. I think we're all comfortable Alonso's all of our first targets, or at least the majority of us want Alonso to be the next manager. But if Xabi Alonso decides to stay at Bayer Leverkusen or take another job, I want to know how you guys feel about the possibility of Ruben Amorim. Because I know a lot of you have concerns, similar to concerns about Alonso, um, about uh, his calibre, you know, how long he's been at Sporting Lisbon, how is he ready to step up to a club like Liverpool? And of course, that's before we discuss the compensation that would be due. Uh, compensation ranges somewhere between 25 million and 17 million, depending on uh, the date of his clause. I think I think there's something in his bio clause that works backwards that gets a bit less uh, expensive the more his contract runs down. But I want to know how you're feeling about it. I've spent a lot of time researching Ruben Amram over the last few weeks. Obviously, some of them for video, some of them just out of interest myself. And I've got to say, everything that I've read fills me full of confidence that he would be, he is going to be, whether it be at Liverpool or somewhere else, a top, top coach. The, the things that keep jumping off the page when you're reading up on him is relationship with his players, ability to motivate tactical acumen and um, somebody who just is hungry to learn and like Alonso almost obsessed with football so I really like the idea of Ruben Amram but I can't bury my head in the sand and say it isn't going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to be a gamble it is if Ruben Amram becomes Liverpool coach it's going to be a gamble but then again so is anybody that comes in after Jurgen Klopp and to that 
I want to draw your attention to Glenn Johnson and something Glenn Johnson said being interviewed. I think it was for one of the betting companies or something like that. So I disagree a lot with Glenn Johnson on this. But I want to know what you guys feel after I read it out to you. So he said, I believe somebody else needs to come in after Jurgen Klopp and take the bullet first. What he means by that is he thinks whoever the next manager after Jurgen is, is destined to fail. So he said, I think somebody needs to come in after Jurgen Klopp and take the bullet first. I know that sounds horrible and brutal to say, but there's no chance of whoever comes in next being better than Jurgen, and that's a testament to the team he's built at Liverpool. The best they can do is match him, and that's a hard place to start. I think an older manager needs to go in there with the mindset and know that they're only going in there for a couple of years. Once there's a dip, you can give the younger manager a chance. Taking over after Jurgen would be such huge shoes to fill for somebody at an early stage of their managerial career. Now, I hate that on every level. Basically, what Glenn Johnson, to me, is saying there is, we need to write off the next two years. We need to bring in somebody who we know isn't going to succeed because Glenn Johnson thinks that nobody's going to be able to come in and succeed after Jurgen. I don't buy into that one bit. And I'm very, very glad Glenn Johnson has no say over the recruitment policy here because that is a defeatist mindset, which surprises me coming from somebody, obviously, who played at the levels Glenn Johnson did, uh, represented his country, obviously played with Liverpool as well. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. That's ridiculous. You know, you want to bring in somebody who wants to carry on the great work that Jurgen has done to... You want somebody with balls big enough to come in and go, not only am I going to carry on what Jurgen's done, but I'm going to win more. And I'm going to win us two Champions League. And you want somebody with that mindset that has no fear, that knows this is their destiny, knows they're ready, and knows that they won't be overawed by the job. So I disagree with Glenn Johnson on that one, but I wanted to get your take on it. Uh, so Johnson wants to be us to be another United. Exactly, Dean. I don't get the mindset, mate. I don't get it. Like, admitting the next two years are going to be a failure is absolutely wrong. Like, it's... Look, I actually have a lot of time for Glenn Johnson. I don't mind Glenn Johnson at all. Um, and I think Glenn Johnson had a very good playing career. Uh, honestly, I don't find Glenn Johnson one of those really annoying former players. I think he's all right. But I disagree with him strongly on this one. And also, while we're talking about disagreements and offences, one football posted, Sandro Tonali charged by the FA for further betting offences. Are you ready to hear this? Newcastle midfielder Sandro Tonali has been charged by the Football Association for allegedly placing bets on games during the start of this season. Tonali was banned for 10 months earlier in the campaign for placing bets on matches during his time in Serie A. It's even been reported that he was placing bets on Newcastle. Now, I don't know that yet, but something stinks about that Sandro Tonali transfer to me. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel very confident that there was some awareness about these betting patterns before he was sold. Doesn't If I was a Newcastle fan right now, I'd say that this stinks the high hell, quite frankly. Uh, I don't want to feel left out, said Pronoun Dilemma. Thank you, sir, for your very kind super chat. Appreciate you. And appreciate our interactions as well on Discord, mate. Very much enjoy them. Tonali, one charge. City, none. Um, it looks like Tonali could be facing another ban here. Like, he's been out for 10 months. And now, I think, I think if I read the article correctly, it was 50 bets that they were talking about here. 50. So, I don't know what happens, but it doesn't look like he'll be pulling on that Newcastle shirt anytime soon. Um, let's have a look at the poll, actually, and check in and see how you guys are voting on that. Who was better for Liverpool, Robbie Fowler or Michael Owen? We've had nearly a 1,000 votes cast, and so far, 83% of you guys say Robbie Fowler, and the remaining 70% go with Michael Owen. Uh, hey, Craig, hope all is well. Can we go over the Darwin stats again? Love a positive Darwin stat. Oh, God, yes. Oh, God, yes. Right, so I was sent this by Mark yesterday. Thank you, Mark. I didn't get a chance to read it out on yesterday's, or not yesterday's stream, the day before. So according to Squawker and ESPN, in a recent analysis with Opta, Darwin Nunes is the best striker in English football with a score of 78%. Let me just read that sentence out again because, my God, it sounds good. 
Darwin Nunes is the best striker in English football with a total of 78%. The criteria in question was XG without penalties, goals and assists, expected assists, big chances created, uh, completed possession won uh, in the defensive quarter, shots, shots placed, accuracy of shots, uh, percentage of shots that end in the goal and touches in the rival opposition team's area. So there you go. Darwin Nunes is the best striker in English football, according to Opta, ESPN and Squawker, who combined their information to come up with that. 78%. Come on now. Show Darwin a bit of love. That's class. 78%. Um, and the good news, as I said earlier on, the start of the stream is, he's also rested up and ready to go for Brighton this weekend, having missed out on Uruguay's games during the international break. So, boom. There you go. You're Darwin Nunes. Best in the Prem. Best in English football, actually. Let's not just limit that to the Premier League. Uh, Pran, I've upgraded his membership to Anfield Agenda Ultras. Look forward to catching up with you in the Discord group, sir. If you want to join us, just check out the um, check out the membership tab of the YouTube channel and you'll see a link. My friends, left corner. We are only 82 subscribers away from hitting 251,000. If you haven't subscribed, please take a second to do so. And also, don't forget, you can download SofaScore completely free with the QR code on the screen or the link in the description. Right, more news to get through. So, sometimes I lean on the Premier League app for bits of information. Obviously, if you're playing FPL and stuff, it's really cool. But there's another bit that I want to move to in a second. Izzy, thank you, said, we love Darwin. And Izzy sent a £5 super chat. Izzy, when we do the Cardiff show, not only are your tickets on me, your first round of cocktails are on me as well, Izzy, for all the help you've given us behind the scenes over the years, especially with Discord, my friend. So, yes, we do love Darwin. And um, it's great news to hear that he is statistically, at the moment, the best English, the best striker in the English leagues. Right, so... One of the cool things about the Premier League's official app is not only, obviously, the FPL on it, but it gives you information. And one of the things that I found out was the average points of remaining opponents for Liverpool and Manchester City uh, and Arsenal. So, basically, they've given us a way of having a look to see who we think should have this slightly easier running. So, Liverpool's opponents in the closing part of the season have averaged 38.9 points this season so far, which is less than Manchester City's opponents, which have 41 points, and Arsenal's opponents, who've averaged 42.3 points. Now, these are the opponents they have left to play. So, these are the averages of their points so far throughout the campaign. So, statistically, it looks like Liverpool ever so slightly has... A bit of a more straightforward run in. Now let's look at the fixtures themselves. Obviously this weekend Liverpool play Brighton. And we know that Manchester City are taking on Arsenal. After that we have Sheffield United. Um, Arsenal have Luton Town at home. And Manchester City have Aston Villa at home. Aston Villa at home is next for Arsenal. We follow it up with Crystal Palace at home. And Luton Town at home for Man City. But if you look through those fixtures. Ones that I think each club could find a little bit difficult. For Arsenal, obviously going to the Etihad is going to be difficult to take on City. Villa at home, no gimme there. Villa obviously in a chase for Champions League places as well. So they're going to have to come up with something. Uh, then there's Wolves and Chelsea. I mean, Wolves away, not going to be easy with the way Gary O'Neill has Wolves playing. And also, Gary O'Neill has been tipped for a coaching job at Manchester United. I'm sure you've seen that recently. And then they have Chelsea at home. So again, not straightforward. After that, they've got Manchester United away and then Everton at home. For Liverpool, our games are Brighton at home this weekend, which should be difficult, but I hope we can get through that. Then Sheffield United at home, and look, let's be honest about this. With all due respect to Sheffield United, that's the game we look at to try and close the goal difference. Then we've got Manchester United away. It's a game we quite simply have to go to Old Trafford and win. Um, other fixtures for us that could be potentially difficult. West Ham away, maybe. Spurs at home. I think we beat Spurs at Anfield. Spurs play right into our hands, honestly. I feel like we're going to turn them over at Anfield. Uh, and then Villa away is a very difficult in the second to last match week. For Manchester City, they have Arsenal at home. Then they've got Aston Villa at home. Other tricky games for them. Maybe Brighton away at the Amex. Uh, Spurs away in the second to last or towards the end of the campaign as well. So... We're in with a good show, is where I'm going with all of this in the long-winded way. Um, I still think we win the league. I do. And I think, and I hope, that this weekend we finish it on top of the league table. All we need is either Arsenal to draw with Manchester City or Arsenal to beat, or to lose to Manchester City, us to beat Brighton and we're top of the league. 
But I guess the question that we've all asked all week is, which is the best result for us? Because I've not argued, that's not the right phrase. I've debated back and forth with people about this. I feel like I want an Arsenal win. Because in my mind, that would then leave too much for Manchester City to make up on us. And I feel like it's a straight shootout between us and Arsenal if Arsenal win. And I feel like we can get the better of Arsenal over the last remaining games. Even if it comes down to a goal scored shootout. So for me, I'd like Arsenal to go and win. I know other people want to draw because they want both teams to drop points. But I feel like that only prolongs the title race a little bit more. If Manchester City win... And we win, then that gives us a nice little three-point buffer over Arsenal. And we still maintain the one-point lead over City. So, I mean, over to you guys. What do you think? What do you want to happen? Uh, Claude Levante, thank you. Wow, 50 gifted memberships. That's incredible. Claude, thank you, sir, so much. Um, and I'm sure that the people who've got those memberships are very grateful as well. Adam Canu, five gifted memberships. Adam, top man, sir. Thank you very much. I mean, love is in the air tonight, my friends. I love it. I love the generosity of people towards each other. Oh, wow. 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 Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. Liverpool latest, Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on the final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. Let me say that again. Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on the final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. Now, he hasn't said why. And that much I think we need to find out. Wow. Can I be honest? This doesn't surprise me as much as I think it may surprise others. One thing you may have noticed me hinting at over the last few days is Ruben Amorim, Ruben Amorim, Ruben Amorim. Because a lot of the stuff that I'm hearing behind the scenes is about Michael Edwards and Liverpool's admiration for Ruben Amorim. So it's a disappointment to see Paul Joyce post that. And again, Paul Joyce is a journalist I have the utmost respect for. And if he posts that, I believe he's very well informed to post that. But it is a shock, right? Interesting. Do you reckon that that's because he's going to stay at Leverkusen or because we don't feel he's the right fit? Uh, Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp from Paul Joyce. Pranav, thank you for that super, net, or super chat. Wow. Now, I'm honestly, I'm honestly a bit more relaxed about this than some of you may be because, as I said, I've spent a lot of time looking into Ruben Amram because I've been... I haven't been told Alonso's ruled out. I'm not going to say I have. I haven't. I've never been told Alonso's ruled out. Um, I believe Paul Joyce, though, so if Paul Joyce says it, I've no reason to doubt him. But I have been given a lot of indication that Ruben Amram is... I tell you what, I tell you, full disclosure, I've been very close to making a video to say he's the number one choice. But I held off because common sense to me in my own head dictated that Shirley Jabi Alonso would be the number one choice. But I honestly feel like Ruben Amram's name, along with Julian Nagelsmann, could be high contenders there. But it is still massive news nonetheless. Uh, Big Wig reckons staying at Bayern, or Bayer Leverkusen, excuse me. That's kind of the vibe coming out of Bayern Munich as well. I think they start to think as well now that maybe Alonso's hanging off another year. Um, maybe he fancies taking over that Real Madrid job if Carlo Ancelotti departs in a year's time. I mean, I'm going to be honest and say I, I could understand that. You know, I, I would love him at Liverpool. Of course I would. But if he wants to have one more year at Leverkusen and let's say, I don't know, Florentino Perez gave him the old nudge to say, look, Carlo's departing in a year. You carry on doing what you're doing. Get a taste of Champions League football with Leverkusen. And you can come to the Santiago Bernabeu as Real Madrid manager. I mean, look, it'd be a difficult one to say no to when you look at the quality of youth and attacking players they're bringing in there. You know, Endrick, Vinny Jr., Rodrigo, Jude Bellingham. I could understand that if, if that's the case. Um, but... I guess it gives us more of a reason to discuss Ruben Amorim tonight then, right? 
Actually, I think we need to end this poll anyway because there's more important topics to discuss now. So 81% of you guys disagree with Michael Owen and think that Robbie Fowler was better for Liverpool Football Club and I very much agree with you. So look, let's get back to uh, to the conversation about the manager. So look, this is definitely a shock um, to hear Paul Joy say that he's unlikely. Now, he doesn't say definitively that he's not going to be on the list, but I think... Trying to read between the lines here, it feels like Alonso's kind of briefing that he's going to stay put for another season. Um, and I've always said to you, if that's his decision, I can understand that. I truly can understand that. Obviously, I'd be disappointed if he didn't feel like the jump to Liverpool was a good move for him. But I understand if he feels he's, he's in the middle of a project there and perhaps wants to see the project through a little bit further, take Leverkusen into the Champions League next year. And yeah, I, I can understand that and I can appreciate that. Certainly a lot more than I could have understood him running to take the Bayern job. That would have felt uh, that would have felt wrong. That just would have felt like a poor choice to me. Uh, Rams and Eel, welcome to Anfield Gen, the Ultras, mate. Appreciate you. Thank you. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed. And with that disappointment comes a lot of frustration. And you guys need to vent somewhat in the chat. I understand that. But all I would ask is, don't give in. Don't don't let this be a thing that you think, oh, that's it. We're, we're in trouble. It isn't. We'll sort it. And I guess it gives us more of a conversation topic now to talk about Ruben Amorim. Because I think Ruben Amorim will probably propel to the top of this list now. Um, at least off what I've read what I'm reading and seeing um actually you know what I said I was going to hang off on this but I feel like I need to talk about it while I've got 1500 people in the chat I'm not going to say any names here I'm going to let you decide who this is but we have had it confirmed that a certain football content creator has been ratting on people and dubbing them in to an image company that sells the rights to photographs that somebody has a license to and has been then dubbing in everybody else now i wasn't dubbed in but some of my friends were dubbed in by this person and this person has been going around undermining other content creators for years whether that's sending legal letters whether that's uh, threatening behavior threatening to have channels closed down this is only the latest in a line of underhanded cowardly manipulative ways from this content creator now i'm not going to say his name because i'll let you work it out for yourself but just know that he's tried to undermine channels of the same club to the one that he professes to support and it's coming back to bite him in the backside because he isn't as clever as he thinks he is and um karma's a bitch but there you go so I'll let you figure it out for yourself, but let's just, you know, see if anybody comes up and talks about it. Because I feel like a couple of the parties who were ratted in on are going to speak up on it. Not my place to do so on that. I'll leave them have the fun with it. But just again, to let you know what this industry is like and what some people and how they behave. Cowardly. Underhanded. Can't look you in the eye because they're a pussy. But, hey, it's not us, so we're good. Right, anyway, to get back to the managerial talk. I think, do you know what? Let's, let's revisit this. If it isn't going to be Xabi Alonso, who are your next choices? Because for me, I've been fairly open about this for a while. I've thought it's going to be Alonso is my number one choice. Then Ruben Amorim. After Ruben Amorim, I'm probably... I'm probably Nagelsmann, but with reservations. I'm not 100% convinced on Nagelsmann yet. So, I know that the uh, German Football Federation want to discuss extending with Nagelsmann, but I also feel like they probably have one eye on Jurgen Klopp and hope Jurgen Klopp will lead them into the next World Cup. So, for me, I think if it isn't Amorim or Nagelsmann, I'm kind of drawing a blank after that. Like, De Zerbi's a good coach. But there are pros and cons to the Zerbi and the Zerbi style of football. When it works, when Brighton are free-flowing, it's incredible. It's beautiful to watch. 
and they carve open teams. But there are also times when, like this season, it goes wrong. It, it goes wrong quickly. And I don't know, Deserby for me has the credentials as a coach to come in and manage Liverpool, but not so much the persona, if that makes sense. He just doesn't strike me as a Liverpool manager. And that's just my own viewpoint on it. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't know if he'd have that connection. Because the Liverpool manager's job is it's a little bit different to some others. You do kind of have to you have to resonate with the fan base. And obviously Jurgen done that in spades. Rafa, incredible, did it as well. So for me, I'm stuck after those two. Uh, Craig, I read an article earlier saying Sunday could be an audition for the Liverpool job. Yeah, I've seen that same article. I read that myself yesterday. Um, or a similar article anyway yesterday. And maybe it is. Maybe it is an audition, but I want him to fail the audition. Mainly because, of course, I want Liverpool to win the game. So, yeah, I hope it goes poorly from this weekend uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, Lee Claxton said, Conte, Lee, mate, can you imagine Antonio Conte working under John W. Henry? It, it would not end well. Um, and look, after what Antonio Conte did with Spurs and the way he the way he left, no thank you. Um, I don't think Antonio Conte is a good fit for Liverpool at all. Uh, Craig, have we had bad news with Alonso? Unfortunately, yes. Paul Joyce has posted um, to say that, again, I'm going to read it out to you in its entirety just because I don't want to miss misquote. Uh, Paul Joyce posted to say, Liverpool latest Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. Um, let's see what this one is about. One second. What have these lads posted? So Paul Joyce has also said Liverpool may now look at Ruben Amorim and Roberto De Zerbi. So, Amorim or De Zerbi? I feel like there's a poll in this. Let's get going. Let me ask the poll in a second. Okay, so I'm going to simply just ask you, who would you rather, Amorim or De Zerbi? Vote away and we'll leave it up for the next hour or so. Craig, I love you. Thank you. Craig loves you too. And yes, Craig did just use his name in the third person. <laughs> Imagine how many trophies we'd win with Ancelotti. Oh, mate, sign me up. Sign me up. You know, I think when Liverpool were recruiting Jurgen Klopp, the two names on the list were perfect. It was Carlo Ancelotti and it was Jurgen Klopp. And I've got to say, Klopp was the one I wanted. But look, I have nothing but respect for Carlo Ancelotti as a coach. Nothing but respect. Um, but I don't think Carlo Ancelotti will be the next Liverpool manager because he's still contracted with Real Madrid. And I think he sees out that year of his contract. There's also been talk that he then goes and manages the Brazilian national team. But I'm not sure about that one. But look, I rate Carlo Ancelotti incredibly highly. Uh, Craig, do you rate Fabrizio Romano? I don't. So, it depends what you mean by rate. Do I think he gets good information? Yes. Do I like him? Absolutely not. I find him a problem. I find him a rat. And by rat, I don't mean about any physical appearances or anything. I mean, I don't get the point of him. All he does is tell tales. All he does is the bidding of agents. And after everything that's been leaked and posted about from Itzio Romano over the last month it's kind of confirmed my own suspicions of him in that I don't see him as a journalist because he doesn't I just see him as a a tattletale a rat somebody who only does the bidding of people who pay him enough money in the direction that he they want him to go with things so no I don't like him to be honest with you but his information I think his information is always um Fairly solid because it's coming directly from people who want the narrative pushed in a certain way. Uh, White Hammer said, Alonso no longer on the list. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't look so, um, according to, to Paul Joyce. And look, Paul Joyce is in the very, very, very credible list, as we know. So 
yeah, um, you know, let's see. Often the case in these type of things is that the leading candidate for these type of positions is never the one that gets the job. It's, it's never usually the first name that's mentioned. So I don't know. It looks like if what Paul Joyce has said is that it could come down to Ruben Amaram and Roberto De Zerbi and we have a poll at the top of the chat and so far it's a landslide in favour of Ruben Amaram, which I agree with. I think Ruben Amaram is is a better candidate for us than De Zerbi. I like De Zerbi as a coach. I do, I really do. I just don't see him as a Liverpool coach. Do you know if Amram can speak English? I'm almost certain he can. Yes. He wouldn't be considered if he if he wasn't able to speak English. It, it wouldn't happen. Uh, Davino, how are you? Hey, Craig, flying to Dublin in May. Any chance you can meet up for a cup of coffee? Lots of love from Boston. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Give me the date uh, and we'll arrange something. Uh, Davino, you can DM me on Discord, mate. It'd be, mate, on me, 100%, no bother. Love to meet you. And uh, I hope you enjoy your visit to Dublin. So, yes, dude, we will definitely sort that out. Uh, I, I'm sad I couldn't get over to Boston to meet you in person there. But if you're coming to Dublin, absolutely, mate, we'll sort that. Craig, Fabrizio tweeted that Amram is the main name on the list. Well, like I said, when the information about Joyce came out, or from Joyce... That's kind of the vibe I've been getting behind the scenes as well on Ruben Amarum. That's why I went into such detail researching Ruben Amarum for that little video. And I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out the situation at Ruben Amarum. So I'm not surprised if, if people are starting to think like he's the top name on the list because he's very, 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 very highly regarded by Michael Edwards. And even before the Edwards and Richard Hughes thing was announced, there was some chatter that... Amaram has scored really highly on the, the list of criteria that Liverpool are going to be looking for. So, again, it's no surprise. It's a surprise that Alonso isn't going to be that guy. But after that, I'm not at all surprised to hear Amaram's name near the top of that list. Um, let's not give up on Jabby yet, said Casper's photography. Honestly, dude, if Joyce and Fabrizio and many others are going with this, I think that's... I think that's pretty a pretty strong indication that it's unlikely. So I feel like I feel like maybe we'll see Alonso stay at Leverkusen, but you know it's disappointing. I can't lie. You know we all want to grab Alonso, but I guess at this point we have to trust the process. As as hard as that is to say and think of, we do. We have to trust that Michael Edwards that. FSG. As much as I don't like trusting FSG for anything, I do trust Michael Edwards. Um, and him and Richard Hughes and our analysts will sit down and find the right guy. And it looks like that guy could be Ruben Amarum. What tactics does Amarum use? Let me just see if I still have my notes on Ruben Amarum. Let me just open up my notes in one second. Uh, I did a load of notes for the videos, so bear with me. Where's my Ruben Amarum notes? I think I deleted them, you know. Uh, he plays a variation of a 3-4-3. So I'm working off memory here, by the way, because my notes have been deleted. So he plays a variation of 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, interestingly about Ruben Amaram is his Sporting Lisbon team and teams he coached before that uh, are very proficient in using a low block defensively. So one of the things I thought of when I read that about Ruben Amaram and his team selections are, well, I hope he can teach us to break down a low block i hope he can reverse engineer that low block for us because that's obviously been a problem that we've had but it is unsurprising to me that we're looking at a coach there that utilizes a 3-4-3 system again um it's kind of the modern trend right now isn't it you know three center backs two wing backs young coaches coming through seem to play in that way what's this one sec oh yeah ben's Ben's sending me stuff I'd already seen, but thank you, Ben. Uh, from AUST. Hi, from Austin. Sorry, it must be Austin. Uh, is Gary O'Neill maybe a thought for us? Premier League proven. Uh, it's interesting you say that because, look, I rate Gary O'Neill, but I don't think he's ready. He has been touted as a Manchester United coach 
But I don't know if they mean manager or they mean come in as the number two at Manchester United, maybe with a view to become the number one. Gary O'Neill, of course, has history working at Liverpool um, in the underage systems. So, look, I like O'Neill. I just don't think he's ready yet. But I do think he is destined for bigger things. Uh, Casper Photography said, don't make me cry, Craig. It isn't me, dude. It isn't me making you cry. It's, it's Mr. Joyce this time. And he's made all of us a little bit shocked, let's be honest. Uh, right, if Amran is the man, I can see Inacio coming along with him to Liverpool. Yes, as can I. Uh, or Diamande, because Diamande is another name that's been linked with Premier League moves and another name that's highly regarded in um, coaching circles. So whether it's Diamande or whether it's Inacio, um, it will be interesting to see. And also, he'd have a release clause. And I know... That there's been reports that that release clause is about 25 million. Something I read somewhere suggested that this summer it'll go down to about 17 million, but still a significant outlay. Oh, Aust is Australia. Sorry, dude. Yeah, I'm. You're right. Yeah, I'm so distracted by trying to think on other things. Yeah, you're right, man. Sorry about that one. Yes, Australia. Apologies. Uh, someone said Gary has LFC history yes I'm almost certain Gary O'Neill was coach of one of our, our underage teams at one point um, as I've said I don't really pay that much attention to uh, underage football at Liverpool I don't really watch the academy systems much but I'm I'm working off memory here and I'm open to being corrected but I'm almost certain Gary O'Neill was a coach at Liverpool under 18's coach or something like that I'm, I'm almost certain of it Uh, 75 more subs come on set up the reds yes please do if you haven't subscribed folks please do hit that button uh, Benjamin Alford thank you my friend in New Zealand what a night tonight by the way I mean we're at 1.1k in super chats and stuff I mean I'm blown away honestly thank you all uh, hello Craig awesome to be back Joyce doesn't actually say Xabi isn't available he said Liverpool think he's not available I think he's replacing Carlo at Madrid my worry now is uh, if Amaram will keep our stars so I'm looking at a bit of this here so the article said Xabi Alonso Liverpool look elsewhere as coach set to stay in Germany that's what the article said, that he's set to stay in Germany. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen manager was seen as a potential replacement for the departing Jurgen Klopp, but may the club may now look to sporting Lisbon head coach Ruben Amaram. So I, I kind of think what you said there, Benjamin, could be true. He may have gotten the nudge from Florentino Perez to say, one more year for Carlo, mate, and then you take Leverkusen into the Champions League, get a bit of experience and come to the Santiago Bernabeu. And look, I can understand that a lot more than the Bayern Munich job. I don't want us to lose out on Alonso, but if it is to be the case, I could certainly understand him getting the best of both worlds there because you get one more year at Leverkusen to continue on the project and then maybe go into, let's be honest, a very, very, very well-assembled Real Madrid team. But there's one thing that nobody's mentioned. We're all talking about him potentially to Real Madrid, but we haven't yet really addressed the elephant in the room. And not me for once. What happens if Real Madrid go to the Super League? Because remember, this Super League is supposed to kick off in a year's time. So what happens if Real Madrid depart for the Super League? I mean, there's talk that some of those players may be banned from representing their country. So you'd have Jude Bellingham, Kylian Mbappe perhaps. You'd have a coach there in, in Jabi Alonso, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, um, Endrick. What happens with all those guys? There's so much up in the air in world football at the minute that it's really disconcerting to see all of this information. So I truly don't know what to think. Um, but I do truly believe that Paul Joyce is on the money here because it will be backed up by a lot of other journalists very quickly. Uh, someone's already said that Fabrizio has pointed to Liverpool looking through Ruben Amaram. Uh, minority here, I'd prefer Nagelsmann instead of Amaram, said A. Santino. I can understand that, mate. I can totally respect where you're coming from on that one. You know, I there's something about Nagelsmann that never really sat right with me, but I, I'm saying I'm petty enough to remember his Hoffenheim uh, qualifier in the Champions League against us where he talked about Anfield and, you know, it wouldn't get to his players and blah, blah, blah. And I always kind of just thought of him as a little bit of a gobby upstart. But um, 
I can understand why why you like the idea of him. Um, yeah, certainly I feel like he's more possible than Deserby uh, as a Liverpool coach. Uh, too much chaff from you, Craig. Sometimes when you're arguing with this Plettenberg, then you said he'll come to Liverpool. What happened? No, 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 no. Fuck you. You don't get to put words in my mouth. You show me one stream where I ever once said Xabi Alonso's coming to Liverpool. Show me. Have I said he'll come to Liverpool over Bayern? Absolutely I have. That'll stand over. Never ever once have I said that Xabi Alonso will be Liverpool manager. You don't get to put words in my mouth. And you don't get to try and be that guy. Throughout this entire process, I have been nothing but open, honest, and sincere about what I don't know, what I do know. And never once did I utter those words. So not too much talk from me, not enough listening from you. Uh, Benjamin said, let's be honest, Craig, I think this is an awful decision from Xabi. Madrid requires an older head as manager. It can be manager killer, and I agree, Nagsman, to me, he is the one. Um, On that one, Look, one thing I've said about the whole Liverpool managerial situation is whoever the next manager is going to be, and this applies to players as well, to me, you shouldn't have to be convinced to come to Liverpool Football Club. You should want to come to Liverpool Football Club. It should be the highlight of your career to career to come to Liverpool Football Club. So if Alonso chooses not to come to Liverpool Football Club and stay or maybe go to Madrid, absolutely, that's his prerogative and his decision. But I, I don't want anyone that needs convincing. I don't think any of us should. You know, we're a massive club. You should be... It should be a, the highlight of your career to come to Liverpool as a coach. So, for me, if Alonso's made this decision, it's his decision. Uh, language, Craig. Children are watching. With all due respect, Danny, I don't pitch the show to kids. I've never pitched it to kids. And I don't know what your problem with swearing is. Do you think your kids don't hear swear words? Do you think when you're not around, they don't swear? Who are we protecting, Danny? What's wrong with swearing? Would you prefer if I swore and your kids heard it? Or if I, you know, spoke about misogynistic views or aggression and warped kids' minds in that way? So again, for these people that are pearl clutching, if you think that everybody doesn't swear, cop on. So I, it's not my job to police your kids, mate. If I swear when I'm emotive on something, tough, that's it. Don't like it, don't watch. I'm not changing who I am for you or anybody else. I swear when stuff is emotive to me. Stop the pearl clutching, dude. This isn't CBBC. Uh, usually when Joyce posts, we are closer than we know. I'm all in on Ruben now, but I'll 100% back the Zerbi or Nagelsmann or any young manager with potential. See, I'm in that camp as well, X pulls you. Whilst I have my own preferences, um... I, I, I definitely prefer Amorum over the names you've mentioned, but I'm with you. I'll, I'll respect and get behind any coach that comes in um, because, of course, we want the coach to succeed. And I, as I said, we have to trust the process, and I trust the process here. I'm disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I'm absolutely disappointed, like all of you. But I will say again, nobody should need convincing to come to Liverpool Football Club. Uh, mate, you're allowed to swear past nine on telly anyway, so swear away. I, I don't get it. Like, honestly, me and the swearing thing, it, it cuts deep with me because I honestly don't know who you're trying to protect. I've said it over and over again. Like, ki if you think kids don't hear swear words, don't swear, I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say to you. You're living in some weird parallel sheltered universe. Um, One, I'm Irish and it's my birthright to swear. And two, I like it. So... Right, let's have a look at the poll and see how it's going. So we said, who would you rather, Ruben Amram or Roberto De Zerbi? And it is a landslide here, my friends. 86% of you have gone with uh, Ruben Amram so far. Ange would be a great fit for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you on that one. Look, we've never really mentioned or spoke about Ange Postacoglu because 
there's no way you're getting him out of Spurs on, on two levels. One, best of luck trying to deal with Daniel Levy in that regard. Uh, and two, again, like Alonso, he's in, he's in there to build something and he's only in year one. So, yeah, look, I don't think it'll be Ange Postacoglu. Izzy, gifting five memberships. Thank you, Izzy. Appreciate you. So, again, just to go back to that, that earlier on, because I like to fight my own corner on these things. I'm always happy to be pulled up on stuff, but I never once ever uttered the words, Xabi Alonso is going to manage Liverpool, because I don't know that. So, why would I say it? I didn't. So, again, happy to be pulled up. I know you're disappointed, but don't take your disappointment out on me. I'm merely just reading out posts, mate. Would you sell Adrian? Well, the good news is we won't need to because he's going to be out of contract in the summer. So we can give him the old um, Wundle plus Wundle equals Toodle. Toodles. Yeah, sometimes I do go that pathetically childish, but... Uh... We're getting cooked on socials again, Craig. Rival fans bringing the rejection FC thing back. I don't understand why you're, why you're fussed about it, Arian. Ask all the rival fans where they are in the league. Ask all the rival fans how many European Cups they have. Ask all the rival fans if they think Liverpool are in a good position right now. Let them talk. That's all they can do, mate. But I tell you one thing. The fact that they talk about it so much is only for one reason. Because they're concerned. And they have every right to be concerned because Liverpool are in a good place. So let them keep talking and we'll just keep picking up trophies, mate. And uh, again, it's funny that they all have something to say when something goes slightly amiss for us. But when we're winning, they're very quiet, aren't they? So yeah, let them talk. Um, 500 likes, Colin is silent now, said Izzy. Thank you. Right, some more news on this one. Paul Joy said, Ruben Amram has a release clause of £17 million. Now... Can somebody give me some credit on this, please, for once? Lewis Steele posted the other day to say, and I think it was Lewis Steele, that he has a release clause of 25 million quid. And did I or did I not say to you good people that to my understanding, that release clause is 17 million quid and it's gone down because of the stipulations in his contract? If I haven't yet proved my credentials, I don't know what to say to you, but... That's the information I had, exactly as Paul Joyce said it, that Amram's contract does have a release clause and that that figure in the summer will be 17 million. So that adds up to exactly the information that I've seen, read and heard. Uh, do you think the way Xabi left as a player might be a big decision why he doesn't want to come back as a manager? The Barry saga still annoys me. No, I don't. You know, because if you look at the way... Um, the way he speaks, he speaks about Liverpool as us and we. Uh, and he speaks about his biggest regret uh, in his playing career was not winning a league title with Liverpool. So I truly believe Alonso is uh, is very warm towards Liverpool. I don't disagree with you over the whole Barry saga. That was crazy. And, you know, I think Rafa made a, a mistake there. But no, I don't think it's that, Carl, to be honest. Uh, a manager, 17 million. Yeah, uh, interesting, Jan Ruben Amarum. Sporting even paid a, a fee for him when they brought him in. Um, from I'm working off memory, I want to say it was Braga. But they paid uh, 10 million euro to bring Ruben Amarum to Sporting Lisbon, which was the third highest fee at that time ever paid for a manager. So, not unusual. Um, and look, if we have to pay, we have to pay. It is what it is. Um, you know, 17 million worth it if they think he's the right guy uh, Ruben Amram is now the strong front runner for the Liverpool job Roberto De Zerbi has an Anfield audition on Sunday that's from Lewis Steele uh, who do we want then we did a poll on our X account as well Amon, Amram Nagelsmann De Zerbi or other and 69% of the Anfield agenda followers on social media reckon it's Amram on here we gave you a choice between Amram and um Deserby and 86% of you have gone for Amram. Benjamin said, playing devil's advocate, can everyone remember when Edwards was in charge, the media spinning and games? Maybe this article is designed to trigger Alonso and movement. Mm, I don't know, mate. I mean, I love that you don't want to give up on the Alonso situation, but I feel like this is sincere. Um, 
And if Alonso has made his decision, we need to respect that decision and not waste any time. Because look, as we've always said, this is going to be a hectic summer. We need to put in a new manager. They need to sort out their transfer targets. They need to assess the new squad. And they need to do that in a window that's already shorter because of international tournaments where players will be away with the countries, unavailable for medicals and stuff. So I think Liverpool don't have time to hang around. We have to move on. And if Alonso's not at the top of the list, for whatever reason, we have to go about our business. Uh, still think Pep Linders is our man to LFC Shankly. So it looks like Linders could take over at Ajax. That was doing the rounds over the last couple of days. And maybe that would be with a view to if he succeeds at Ajax, then I think his um, appeal to come back as Liverpool manager would be increased a lot. Uh, I do like what you're talking about there, though, the whole boot room philosophy of, of bringing Pep Linders through. But I think Pep Linders just feels like at this stage they came in as a team to Liverpool or they worked as a team and they leave as a team and let a new manager come in with their own um, team, I guess, for want of a better word. Uh, Claude, thank you again, mate. Another 50 Anfield Agenda gifted memberships. You guys are incredible. All of you. To each other, to me. Much, much love. It's beautiful. I don't know what else to say. It's beautiful and I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for your incredible support to me, to the other members of the community and to the channel moving forward. It's it's amazing. Um, Three players in, three out, said Hordor. Three players in, three out. Um, well, look, honestly, I think we're going to need at least two centre-backs this summer. If, if, Amarum, if we're going to play with three at the back, I feel we'll probably need to bring in two centre-backs or maybe have a conversation around uh, Seb van den Berg, who's doing very well on loan um, and with Mainz. So um, things are starting to become a little bit clearer now with regards to... It does seem like we're, we're getting a manager that wants to play a 3-4-3 formation. So what does that mean for wingers? As an example, yesterday we spoke... Or not yesterday, excuse me. The day before we spoke a lot about Lucho's father... And Luto's father running his mouth about his son in Spain and saying, still an opportunity, blah de blah Well, look, if it's going to be Amram that comes in, you know, we, we could probably sell a winger. And if the money came in for uh, Luis Diaz, then sell Luis Diaz. Um, I, I, I strongly believe that you shouldn't need to be convinced to be here or come here. And uh, if his dad feels like Liverpool isn't good enough for him, then find your son a club and uh, off you pop. It's that simple for me. Uh, Craig, do you believe that if we win the league this year, Jurgen has earned the right to change the lyrics to Paisley, Klopp, and Shankly? Look, I love Jurgen, and I put him up there on a pedestal with those greats. Obviously, they were before my time. To me, Jurgen has given me the best years of my life as a Liverpool fan, um, and I'll always only ever think of him in that way as an absolute hero uh can you sing me happy birthday for yesterday yes carl happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday mr carl also known as domestic butler happy birthday to you there you go friends have ever sang happy birthday um brighton preview will be out tomorrow yes for those asking um Loads of notes here to go through, by the way. So I want to just say, we've got 1,666 people in the chat. I will be able to announce midweek next week the venue and the dates for the tickets going on sale for our show in Belfast. There may be a little sneaky show in Dublin as well coming up. I can say to you the show in Belfast will be on the 31st of May. That much I can say to you. Put it in your diaries. And we are closing in on trying to sort venues for Cardiff and Liverpool for the uh, start of August. So Belfast, maybe Dublin, and then we're heading over to Cardiff and Liverpool for uh, one end of season, one start of next season. So I will keep you up to date on those and really would love to see you guys there. For the, for the Belfast show and stuff, those tickets will be going up on Ticketmaster. Lucho's dad should stop talking, said Rachel. Yes, yes, Rachel, very much so. Look, I know that the Diaz family have been through a lot and 
you know, the outpouring of emotion for that family from everybody at Liverpool was, and around the world, was sincere. But it doesn't feel like he's been sincere. You know, Liverpool brought his dad over, I believe maybe even sort of the house for him over here, and have, of course, given him tickets to all of the games, home and away, treated him very well and his family very well, because he's part of the Liverpool family. But it doesn't sit well when his dad is pining for his son to get a move to Spain. It's not right. Whatever way, you know, I know we've got to be careful what we say, but it's not right. It, it comes across as pretty damn ungrateful. Uh, Craig, do you think the odds of Inacio are quite high right now? Um, honestly, the two centre-backs from Sporting are names worth keeping an eye on. One of them seems to be really hot in Diamonde. Lots of clubs being linked to him. Um, Inacio for us, if Ruben Amram comes in, would he want to take a trusted lieutenant with him? Perhaps. What about Gonchales or Gonçalves? Sorry, I don't know how you pronounce that one. Goncalves, Gonçalves. Um, what this does tell me, though, is... I think Harvey Elliott, maybe Fabio Carvalho, their future's just got a bit brighter because number 10s will be required. And we have quite a few players who can play in that number 10 role. Um, so it's going to be interesting now. The picture's starting to become a little bit clearer. Uh, Craig, Amram is a pragmatic coach who uh, isn't... I, I don't know what that means... Uh, they never even got out of their own half in both legs versus Arsenal, but won on penalties. As I said to you earlier on, he is very proficient at setting his teams up with a low block. Um, and yeah, he's a pragmatic coach, but he's also a good motivator, a good tactician, and gets on very well with his players. So we'll have to wait and see. Honestly, um, tonight I came on and honest, I was... I wasn't ready for that Paul Joyce post, so I've kind of had to adjust on the spot here. Uh, hey Craig, hope you're well. I'm currently six months clear of alcohol. So proud of myself. Chose not to drink because my best friend passed away from alcohol poisoning. Anyway, love your content, mate. Keep it up. Josh, we're all proud of you, mate. You know, it's incredible. And six months is, is a long time. And, you know, alcoholism touched my family. Both my parents were unfortunately alcoholics, um, as was my grandparent. Fathers, I should say, grandfathers. And, um... I'm proud of you, mate. And I know the community will be as well. So thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for trusting us. And uh, I wish you just many more years of happiness, mate, on your uh, on your journey through sobriety. Well in. Proud of you. Uh, Khalid. Khalid uh, Alulu. Thank you, mate, for the super sticker. You're really kind. Uh, hey Craig, it's good to see you. Hope you enjoy watching Liverpool match of the weekend. Thank you, Corey. I'm buzzing for it, and we're gonna have a, an extra special day on Sunday. We're gonna go back to back, so we're gonna do a watch along of Liverpool Brighton, and then we're gonna go and do a watch along of Manchester City Arsenal, both right here on Anfield Agenda. And then after the two games, we're gonna do our match reaction show. So yeah, we're gonna be in for the long haul on Sunday. It's gonna be uh, probably about six hours of live content on Sunday. And I love the chat. Look at that. Loads of lovely messages there for Josh as well. Congratulating him and wishing him well. That's that's what I love about our community. Josh felt comfortable sharing that. And our community felt comfortable embracing Josh for that. And I love it. Well in, Josh. Who do you think will win the FA Cup? Uh, Peter reckons Chelsea. Much love to you and the Anfield and the family from a Chelsea fan in the Faroes. Um... I feel like you've got a decent show, honestly, because, you know, you've had some really close games with Manchester City, who I think I think are, uh, are formidable, but maybe. I think whoever wins that game wins the FA Cup. So if you can get past City, mate, yeah, I don't see why not. I certainly know Pochettino's under pressure to deliver, and that's probably the only route into Europe. Sitting on top after we beat Brighton, then watching City Arsenal. Yeah, all going well. I'm hoping that we sit here on Sunday evening and Liverpool back on top of the Premier League table um, and another game ticked off. And then we've got Sheffield United midweek next week. Let's be honest, we should be looking to win that. And then we head to Old Trafford. 
Uh, what happened to Alonso as our manager? Said Glenn. Paul Joyce put out a post tonight, mate. Uh, and it's, I think it's been followed up by many others. And Paul Joyce's post said... Liverpool latest, Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on the final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. And then lots of talk has moved towards Ruben Amaram. So that's where we're at at the minute. And picture's starting to become a little bit clearer. Question is, why don't we use Pep Linders? If Xabi isn't coming, doesn't Almer or excuse me, Amaram seem a big risk? Happy to be proven wrong. Yes, it's a risk. No question, mate. I'm... I'm quite comfortable in agreeing with you on that much, Benjamin. Yes. But so would Alonso be. So would Nagelsmann. So would De Zerbe. There is no guarantees. And especially at this time, it's a very strange time in world football because it's like a changing of the guard between some of the older, uh, hugely respected, successful coaches, your Ancelotti's, your Mourinho's, your Guardiola's, your Klopp's, uh, your Conte's. And now you've got the new generation coming through. Your Alonzos, your Amarums, your De Zerbis, your Nagelsmans, maybe Gary O'Neill even down the line. So it's a strange time because we're, we're, we are definitely going to have to take a risk. Yes, whoever it is. Um, but I was always prepared for that in my own mind that whoever this manager was, it was going to have to be a bit of a punt. You know, because we're losing the best manager in the world, in my opinion, in Jurgen Klopp. So, um, let's see what happens. L look, we got to keep positive. That's the main thing. Think about what we found out this season. We went into a season after a massive disappointment for last season. We've had injury setback after injury setback. But somehow, we are joint top of the Premier League, second on goal difference. We have won one domestic cup and we're well placed in the quarterfinal of the Europa League. So, we've also unearthed really quality young players this year in Connor Bradley, in um, Jarrell Kwanzaa. Obviously, Ben Doak's had a bit of a season that's had knockback with injuries. By Chetich will hopefully be back in April and then refreshed and ready to go for next year. Luke Chambers will be coming back in. We've had Quivin Kelleher have a great season stepping in for Alison Becker. You know, there's been lots of positives. And if you look at the age profile of the team, you know, we talked about Gakpo and Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott and Ryan Gravenberg. You know, young players there as well. Um, so... There's a lot to be positive about, but I, I agree. I will never question anybody who feels like their next manager is going to be somewhat of a risk. It will. Uh, Izzy said, Cardiff pub crawling incoming, her super chat failed. Uh, sorry, Izzy. Yes, Izzy wants to go pub crawling before the Cardiff show. Uh, we can sort that, Izzy. Um, as soon as we get the venue confirmed. We're just waiting on one more piece of information for Cardiff and then it should be booked in. Uh, Claude said, what's the revenue tonight, Craig, mate? Much love. It shows one one point three thousand euro as the revenue mate, but that won't include the the memberships. They update a day later, so I think it's fair to say this has been a record stream for us as a channel ever. This is by far the most money we've ever received in a stream. I don't think it even comes close. So, yeah, I'm I'm in shock for a few different reasons tonight. Obviously, the Alonso stuff. The generosity of you guys, um, amazing, thank you. Isn't there any old head out there to steer the ship? A young manager could be destructive to get Carlo from Madrid. I feel like you're 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 panicking a bit, Benjamin. Um, I don't want a young head. I want a manager with big balls. I want a manager that's going to go, yeah, I'm 38 or 39, but I don't care. Give me the job. I'm ready. And... Ruben Amarum has never been backwards about coming forwards and he backs himself. Um, so, yeah. And look, remember, there was an article written or a post put out a while ago from one of the journalists that said one of the requirements for the next Liverpool manager will be that. Big balls. Belief. Um, nobody wave, who's wavering. Nobody who's concerned. You've got to have full faith in your ability and what you're doing. You've got to will yourself to succeed and... I think we just have to understand that the search is underway and we've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying it's going to be a success. I'm not saying we're guaranteed to win trophies. But what I'm saying is I think we've got the best people in the best positions 
to try and leave no stone uncovered in the search for the next manager. Um, have I missed any more there? I've done Benjamin's. Izzy said, yeah, my super chat just broke down. My bank doesn't allow generosity. <laughs> Thank you, Izzy. You're very kind. Uh, Craig, there isn't a lot of decent managers out there. Having Klopp show so blessed we've been. Absolutely. I, I can't agree with you more. As I said, it's kind of a change in the guard moment in world football at the minute with managers. And um, uh, Look, I'm personally comfortable with Amram. I'm disappointed in the Alonso thing like you all. Absolutely. I'm not even going to pretend I'm not. But I'm comfortable with Ruben Amron because, as I said earlier on, everything I've read about him, every uh, ex-player that spoke about him or every current player that speaks about him, one thing that I think will put Ruben Amron to the test will be he refuses to discuss referees. He refuses to talk about refereeing performances or criticise them publicly. Let's see how well that lasts when he has to deal with Howard Webb and the PGMOL. I think that will put that to the test. Uh, absolutely Benjamin equals fun panic mode my brain accepted Alonso Benjamin panic station Alfred oh mate look I don't think you're on your own it's understandable of course it is but I've never I've never completely just assumed it was going to be Alonso I thought like everybody else he's the favourite I thought it would happen in all honesty but I was never 100% nailed on committed to it so it was it's not a huge shock to me because over the research from the last week, a lot of Amaram stuff kept coming up a lot. How highly Edwards rates him, how highly he scored on the um, background checks or the whatever the metrics are that Liverpool are using to measure the, the um, attributes of the next manager. Carvalho and Amaram with that Portuguese connection. Yeah, Havard, yes. Mr. Larson, I agree. Um, I think that could be a pathway back in for him because we will play with number 10s if we have Ruben Amaram. Uh, here's to a brace for Darwizzi for Sunday, said Mike. Thank you, Mike, and I hope so, dude. I hope so. Did we tell you earlier on? I think I did. For those of you who are coming in a bit late, you love this stat, and I think it kind of fits in well with Mike's super chat there. So, according to Squawker and ESPN... Uh, in a recent analysis with Opta, Darwin Nunes is the best striker in English football with a total score of 78%. The criteria in question was XG without penalties, goals, goals and assists, expected assists, big chances created, completed possession won in the defensive quarter, shots, shots placed, accuracy of shots, percentage of shots that end in the goal and touches in the opposition area. And Darwin Nunes is the best striker in English football with 78%. So, there you go. Can't argue with science. Uh, how did the Boston trip go? It didn't, Carl, quite frankly. Which is why loads of these super chats have come in tonight. Uh, we didn't get into Boston, mate. We got turned away because of uh, a different visa we should have had for a live performance than the visa that we did have. So, we did leave... We we got refused entry and we were seven grand in the bin. So yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, mate, it didn't happen. I was at home, um, which sucked, and that's why I was. I won't lie. I was sulking around for a few days. I was. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. I was sulking here for a few days. In English footy, they do know that Lee Trundle's still active, right? <laughs> now, now. Um, what's the thing about giving up on Alonso? Paul Joyce and many other journalists now going in. So Paul Joyce started the ball rolling, I think, this evening by saying that uh, Liverpool lady Shabby Alonso now unlikely to feature on the final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. Um, looking at his article that he wrote for the Times, it said, Liverpool look elsewhere as coach set to stay in Germany. Bayer Leverkusen manager was seen as a potential replacement for the departing Jurgen Klopp, but club may now look at sporting Lisbon head coach Ruben Amaram. Um, Darwin could be on 25 goals if it wasn't for the post look Darwin's had a great season and I think I think we're well placed to go and win this league title for a few reasons one the timing of players coming back from injury you know Trent is now on the pitch doing training you've seen those images today 
Jones looks like he could be back for this weekend. Even Joel Matip has been pictured doing a few bits out in the pitch of uh, of movement, but of course that's a long process to get back. I think, yes, we've had horrible run of injuries, but I think we're getting players back at the right time. We're in the business end of the season now. And the news today from Andy Robertson was that it'll be days and not a long time. So I don't want to give you an exact date on the return for Andy Robertson, but James Pierce posted earlier on to say that we're looking at days here. So it isn't as serious as was concerned and we should have Robbo back soon. So I think it's all coming up Millhouse. Um, yeah, I feel like it's coming together for us for the end of the season. Is a temporary manager possible? Yes, but I don't know if a temporary manager would change anything. Um, as was pointed out by a lot of people in the chat, it's just a weird time in world football now for managers. And if we did delay it a little bit, I mean, you could have a caretaker in, but it doesn't really change the landscape all that much. I think unless maybe you're banking on Carlo Ancelotti when he leaves Real Madrid being available. Other than that, I, I don't really see that it would change much. Uh, Craig, would you be worried that we haven't really beaten any of the big six? Yes. It has been a concern this season and it is it is a stat we need to work on and get better on. Yes, our performances against the big six this year haven't been great. But I want to say as well, with reason, and a big part of that reason is the PGMOL and their referees. So look at the result. Big six, Arsenal, ring any bells? Uh, should have had a penalty because Martin Odegaard went full on LeBron James and you know not even sent to the monitor. Manchester City... Jeremy Doku, well, he kicked Alexis McAllister in the chest. Again, referee not sent to the monitor. Spurs away. Lucho's goal ruled out. Perfectly good goal. Two dodgy red cards. So there are reasons this season why our results against the top six haven't been all that great. And uh, David Coote, Stuart Atwell, and um, David Coote, Stuart Atwell, Darren England, and Paul Tierney are a good percentage of those. I think Pep Linders will be a good stop gap till Jabby is ready. And if things go well, we may just keep him. So I think what you guys have all guessed is probably right. If Alonso does stay in Germany for another year, it will probably be with a mindset to then go and manage Real Madrid when Carlo leaves. And that would work from him. It would give him another year in Germany, another year under his belt, lead Leverkusen into the Champions League and then go to Madrid. I can understand that. Honestly, I can. That's not what I want. But I can understand it. So, uh, and with regards to Pep Linders, there's been a lot of talk over the last few days that he could be the next Ajax manager. Benjamin said, "Why, Jabby? Why?" I know it's disappointment. It is disappointment. I'm as disappointed as you all, but um, I'm I'm a kind of pragmatic person. You know, there's no point in stressing over stuff you can't change. And if Alonso chooses to stay in Germany, or at least maybe just doesn't want to come to Liverpool now. No point in crying over spilt milk. We've just got to find the solution and move forward. Um, and that's what the club are going to do. So, you know, let's stay positive. This will all become clear over the next few weeks. And, you know, we've still got a lot to look forward to for the end of this season. Imagine Chelsea give us another Lavia situation. Yeah, I mean, he's out for the entire season. That's been very unfortunate for him. Normally, I would call it a night now but I'm going to stay on a little bit longer because obviously the news about uh, Alonso and stuff has a lot of people with a lot of questions and I've gone through all of my notes so I'm just going to go to your comments now and, and reply to as many as possible where is this news coming from Paul Joyce and many other journalists at this point mate um, so you know it's not some crackpot or Johnny on Twitter it's, it's pretty reputable sources Uh, Craig, the amount of Super Chats and membership gifts tonight has surprised me on a Thursday. You and I both, sir, we are at like 1,350 euro in Super Chats. It's a record for the channel. And as you said, on a Thursday night in an international break week, I'm blown away. Uh, Craig, how do they define a big club? In in what sense? I need the context. Um. I, I don't know what you mean by uh, who's they and what do you mean by define a big club. 
So I, I need more context on the question. Would I be happy with the Zerbi, said UK Bantz? Um, no, I wouldn't. I'd understand it. I'd get behind him, but it wouldn't be... I would feel it's it's, it's even more of a risk. Uh, I don't know what it is about the Zerbi. I just always feel like he's got Man City or Barcelona written all over him. Um, and I also know that he wants to go back to Italy and manage. He's, he said that himself at some point. So I like him as a coach. Um, but I just don't see him as a Liverpool manager. But if he was appointed, of course, I'd get behind him. Can we take a strand of hair and clone Klopp or conjure the spirit of Shankly and Paisley, said Benjamin. What you're really trying to say there, Benjamin, is let's cut out the crap. You want me to become the next Liverpool manager, right? If if John W. Henry, you know, comes over to Gorey and asks me nicely, maybe. You don't want me, though. I'd have us relegated. Apparently, the medical team said Lavi wasn't ready and management didn't want to listen. Uh, good for us that we didn't end up with a player that wasn't ready. That's uh, Chelsea's problem now. Can you tell me the news about Alonso? Yes, again, Paul Joyce uh, put out a post that was accompanied by an article that said, Xabi Alonso, Liverpool look elsewhere as head coach set to stay in Germany. Bayer Leverkusen manager was seen as a potential replacement for the departing Jurgen Klopp, but the club may now look at sporting Lisbon head coach Ruben Amorim. So I know it's a massive shock and all, but it is legitimate news from very credible sources. And as I also said, it tallies up with a lot of the stuff I've been reading and hearing and looking into behind the scenes, which was never that, I never knew Alonso wasn't happening. I didn't know that at all. But I did know that there was a lot of fondness and work being done on Ruben Amram uh, with regards to the research and stuff. He was highly respected and Highly touted behind the scenes as well. Uh, pub crawl after every league with McCraig in charge. I feel like, you know, it wouldn't go well, is he? Uh, uh, I'd be a good man motivator, but a terrible coach. This reminds me of when we got told about Jude, how fast said Harry Klein. And how annoying will it be, Harry, if Real Madrid are the reason for both of them? Um, look, if Real Madrid have one more year of Carlo... And then Alonso with Bellingham, Endrick, Chuameni, Camavinga, Rodrigo, Vinicius Jr., uh, Alfonso Davies coming in. They'll probably look to bring in a keeper if. Well, they'll probably bring in, bring in a keeper anyway, but it's scary to see what they're assembling. So, yeah. I don't know what to say. It's. If, I, if, if the news comes out that he joins Bayern Munich, I will be absolutely flabbergasted and it would be insanity. But I do think what you guys have guessed is probably likelier the case. But again, I don't know. Just as I've never professed to say I knew Alonso was 100% coming to Liverpool, I just knew Florian Plettenberg was talking out his backside about agreements and conversations and him going to Bayern. I don't know if that's the case at all. I think it would make sense that he stayed at Leverkusen rather than go to Bayern. To me, because he'd be like a Judas if he went straight to Bayern from Leverkusen after one year, when he's only after dethroning Bayern with Leverkusen. It would just feel like a step sideways. That rail team will be a crime against humanity. What's even more of a crime against humanity is how financially well-assembled it was. Um... They were ruthless and efficient in their transfer dealings, and you gotta respect it. Uh, I don't rate Rodrigo. Am I mad? Look, we all like, dislike, find certain attributes attractive or uh, endearing in, in players. I personally do rate them. Uh, Pranav, hey Craig, tickets for the Europa League final have been sorted. Yes, my man. Yes, sir. We love that, Pranav. Now trying to get a pair for the Wolves game at Anfield. Like I said, I'd be willing to pay a premium. Plan is to fly into Liverpool, then head over to Dublin, get to see two matches. Again, like I said to you yesterday, mate, I uh, I will look out for you and see if I can get... So it's the Wolves game you need now, and you're happy to pay a premium. Leave that with me, and I will get back to you in a day or two. 
but keep trying at your end as well but i'm delighted to hear you got sorted for the final mate just hope we get there um yeah that's the big thing there right hope we get there and also thank you so much. i don't know what on earth that tallies to numbers wise because i don't even know what currency that is mate but thank you so much uh how are you after the news said gino mate i'm shell shocked honestly i'm shell shocked um especially because earlier on today there was lots and i'm gonna actually read out what was posted earlier on today because i feel like it gives more perspective one second So Guillaume Balagay, earlier on today, and like as I said, Guillaume Balagay, very credible journalist, said, Xabi Alonso determined to decide his future in the next three or four weeks. Nothing has been decided yet. So we've gone from that to Paul Joyce and Liverpool journalists saying that no Alonso. Now, what we haven't had confirmed, unless I've missed something here, is have we just ruled out Alonso for criteria reasons or have we gotten wind of a preference for Xabi for staying at Leverkusen or something else that I don't know the answer to at this moment but or maybe Liverpool just don't feel like we can wait around but then I guess if you think of it that way we always knew we were going to have to wait around with Alonso that came became apparent pretty clear or pretty quickly so I don't know I'm like you I'm trying to just process think and um see what's what's likely could be a negotiation tactic I, I don't think it is in all honesty because it's not the way we'd need to operate in this scenario um if it was for a player who had a transfer fee maybe but i don't know in this scenario i don't think it's a smoke screen uh craig i think i've got an idea we'll send you and his interim coach for next season after we play jabby uh, I don't want to be the reason that Liverpool shit the bed in the first Champions League campaign in the new format, mate. So you don't need me. Uh, Craig scored the highest on John W. Henry and Michael Edwards' list of managers. Amram second by a mile. Yeah, I turned down the job twice now. John, he needs to get out of me messages, honestly. Begging me here. Craig, five million, Craig. Uh, Lynch said Alonso's agent has told Liverpool and Bayern he will not be leaving Leverkusen this season. Has he? Can can we get a can somebody send me that post? Um again, just so I have it with my notes, not that I'm I don't believe you. If any if Mark or anybody can send me that, um I'd appreciate it. Uh, it's great to have you back after the unfortunate break. I miss these live shows. Oh, thank you so much, mate. It's um, it's great to be back. It's amazing. Can we get to a thousand likes? By the way, we're only three hundred and three hundred and thirty-two off. So do hit the like button if you haven't. Yeah, mate, it's great to be back. I love it. Um, as I said, I won't lie. I sulked for four or five days, and it hit me hard. I won't lie, mate. I felt like punching a hole in the wall. It was frustrating as hell because I don't like letting people down. Um, which is why I'm determined now to put the shows on in in Belfast and maybe Dublin and Cardiff and Liverpool um, because I feel like I owe you guys something and I feel terrible about the whole scenario um, but I'm so happy to be here with you because I love these streams I love spending time chatting with you all I love you know getting different perspectives on Liverpool and um, you guys have changed my opinion on lots of stuff you've given me insight on things and I hope you know the same has been the other way as well Uh, Sky Sports post Alonso expected to stay in Leverkusen. See, that I can completely respect. And I've said that the entire way through the process. If Xabi Alonso decides to stay in Leverkusen for another year, I respect that. If he was to go to Bayern, I would think he's lost the plot. But if he wants to stay in Leverkusen and see through a bit more of a project that he started there, I mean, it's disappointing, but, you know, I respect it because it's loyalty. Um, to his players, to the coaching staff, to the club. I get it. Uh, so, yeah, if that's his decision, I've always said I'd understand that. It's still disappointing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Craig, we love you too. Thank you, my man, so much, honestly. You don't know what it means to have these kind, of, kind words. Uh, Zahid, you keep writing Sidegate. Are you trying to say Southgate, mate? 
you know, if, if you'd like me to address the Southgate part, may happy to. Uh, no, absolutely no. You know, let let Manchester United have Gareth Southgate. Uh, I'd respect Shabby if he stayed at Leverkusen, said Arian. Yeah, I, I absolutely understand and respect that if he stays at Leverkusen. I've always said that to you guys. And um, just trying to find this post. No, that one's from Paul Joyce. Uh, Liverpool's do jil- oh, I can't say these two words together. Liverpool's do diligence has indicated that Alonso is minded to stay at Leverkusen for at least another season and continue the impressive work that has left the German club on the brink of a first Bundesliga title. And I respect that totally. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not disappointing, but you know, I'm never going to knock somebody for loyalty. Uh, Craig, would you rather played for Liverpool and won nothing or managed them and won the league title European Cup twice in five years? Managed. Yeah, managed. Because I'd want to be part of some success at Liverpool. And if that was in... As a manager, mate, yeah, I take that. Look, playing for Liverpool is every Liverpool fan's dream growing up. But, you know, winning stuff as a coach would be a pretty good second. Uh, Sidegate seems apt for some reason. Yes, it does. Um, Are we harsh on him, by the way? I'm going to end this poll, by the way. Let's see how many votes we've had. Nearly 2,000 votes, and we asked you, who would you rather, Ruben Amorim or Roberto De Zerbi? And 83% of you guys have said Ruben Amorim. So it's been pretty clear that you want him um, as the alternative to De Zerbi. Now, I'm not saying that that means you all want Ruben Amorim. I'm sure there are people who have different opinions. We're now at 1,400, Carl, on tonight. Thanks to your super chat of five quid, mate. That that pushed us up to 1,400 euro on tonight's super chats, which is definitely a record. I mean, wow. Thank you. Check Sky Sports. Will do. Let me just open up my phone. One second. Uh, Sky Sports. Sorry, I'm scrolling through. I'm sure this makes for terrible viewing. Uh, ah, Alonso. Okay. So, an article on Sky Sports reads, Shabby Alonso is not expected to be on Liverpool's shortlist this summer, with the Premier League side expecting him to stay at Bayer Leverkusen. Alonso was believed to be a strong target to replace Jurgen Klopp, who's leaving Anfield at the end of the season, while Bayer Munich were also keen to appoint a fo- their former player as a replacement for the departing Thomas Tuchel. But the former Liverpool midfielder is now believed to be staying with Leverkusen. They were strongly positioned to win their first Bundesliga title in Alonso's first full season as manager. Again, I, I understand that. Is he completely ruled out for us? I mean, you can never say never, but it does seem like there has been a briefing to people whether that's agents club representatives journalists I don't know but it does seem like the words are coming out about Alonso wanting to stay at Leverkusen um, which changed very quickly as I said from earlier on today where we had the um, Guillaume Balaguer post to say Alonso won't make any decision for three to four weeks which is why we ran with three to four weeks in our video earlier and now because that is at odds with what we've heard this evening uh, Carl said Klopp next England manager felt it for a while I can see him being the next German manager Carl in all honesty over the England manager uh, Rachel Henderson said yes I believe that's the end of Jabi to Liverpool well for this chapter yes I think so don't know if it'll be the end of him ever coming to manage Liverpool I guess time will tell in that regard um, sometimes it's just about Right time. Sliding door moments, as I keep mentioning. If you had the opportunity to have Liverpool job, would you take it? No. Not at all. I, I'm No, I, I don't have anywhere near that level of, of coaching ability or a tactical acumen. No, no way. Um, But I'd love to be part of a setup. obviously, yeah. Look, I know where my strengths would be, and it would be in the... Man management side of things, not in the technical, tactical areas, no. So, 
I mean, obviously it ain't going to happen, but no, I wouldn't take the job because I know I wouldn't succeed at it and I would be doing the club a disservice. Do you think his reputation has been tarnished because of it? Alonso's? Not at all, no. I think loyalty is is commendable. Um, I feel far more comfortable hearing that he wants to stay at Leverkusen for another year rather than he wants to jump ship to go to Bayern. Um, I've always said it. If he stays at Leverkusen, I get it. But if he goes elsewhere, I'd question it. So no, I don't think it has tainted at all because of of why if it is that he stays at Leverkusen and wants to lead them out into the Champions League next year I get it uh, Xabi's gone to join Real Madrid in the summer Madrid will be the best manager in the world I think next summer perhaps I think he does that one more year uh Bayer and then yeah I could see him going to Madrid taking over from Ancelotti makes sense Uh, Alonso is staying at Leverkusen because next season will be Ancelotti's last season at Real Madrid and Alonso will be the next Real Madrid manager again I, I don't push back on that that makes a lot of sense and um, I think is reasonable so yeah look I guess to us it's just a matter of we move forward now and look at... I mean let me say this I wonder now will it speed up the process Will Liverpool, because they don't have to wait for Alonso to wait till the end of the season or to make a decision, will this speed up the appointment process? Will we perhaps see Liverpool's manager for next season be nailed on soon? Um, I mean, that could be one upside of this, is we might get the announcement or uh, the decision quicker. What formation do you think Amaran will play? If he's based off what he's playing, 3-4-3. Three four three, uh, which would probably mean a couple of centre backs need to be brought in for us, but it would also leave us with a lot of questions about our wide players. Um, and you know, would Ruben Amrum look to implement the same system in possession? Uh, Amrum's teams have often gone to a box midfield as well. The idea being that the lone striker, um does a lot of the donkey work, but also the number 10s then help create space and join up the attack to give a bit of support to that lone striker. Um, I do have, or had, more in-depth notes on Amram, but my stupid ass has deleted them after I recorded the video. But what I would say is, if you get a chance and you've got eight or nine minutes to spare, the video that I recorded, and it's up on the channel, saying everything you need to know about Ruben Amram, that has a lot of detail in it about his style, um how proficient his teams are at, at using a low block and will give you an insight into his journey to this point as a manager. I'm surprised nobody's asked in the chat, do you think there's any way we can get Jürgen to change his mind now? I mean, the answer would be no, but I thought that would be more of a reflex reaction from people after the Alonso news. Uh, Barry said, good night, legends. Expect a quieter one tomorrow. Today's been amazing. Brian set off a tsunami. Brian, or Barry, absolute legend, mate. Uh, yourself, Brian, um, and all of our friends tonight who've been incredibly generous and gifted loads of super chats. Uh, Pranav, JC, um, everyone. Lewis, I think it was. Thank you all. It's been unbelievable from you, mate. Uh, 1,400 euros, a record for us. Who do you want to be the next Liverpool manager? Well, if it isn't going to be Xabi Alonso, who was my first choice, without a doubt. Uh, Ruben Amram fits the bill for me. After that, I'd probably look at Nagelsmann. Um, that's it, though. I don't really have... After that, there's nobody I'd really... I wouldn't mind Postacoglu, but it isn't going to happen because you know he's, he's in a project at Spurs. Oh, speaking about London clubs, actually, have you guys seen the plans for Fulham Stadium? I don't know if you've seen this or not, but they're putting a swimming pool on the roof. And I'm not even winding you up. It was on Sky Sports. I'm sure it's still up there. Um, they are genuinely putting a swimming pool on the roof of Craven Cottage. Uh, it looks amazing, but it's a bit off the wall. Stargirl. Uh, 
I've just got in this minute, so I'm behind. To be fair, if Alonso is happy where he is and seems to have a lot of support from the club, good luck to him. Who knows, they could be the next big team. I'm with you, Stargirl. Thank you for your super chat, but I'm also with you on that. Um, If Alonso wants to stay there and and see through the project, I respect it. I greatly respect it. So no issues for me on that at all. Uh, The swimming pool. Oh, yeah, I'm not even joking. Like, I'm deadly serious. I'm trying to see if I still have the image of it here. Um, I think I do, you know, one second. Where is this? Maybe if I go into my messages with Connor, one second. I had an image of it because it's up on Sky. Oh, yeah, there it is. One sec. I'll drag this in and see how it fits on screen. One sec. There you go. As you can see there, pool circled. And that was off Sky Sports. So, yeah, there you go. I think I should be back. I think I should be back. Two seconds. I'm back. Sorry. Uh, OBS quit on me. I was trying to close the picture and OBS closed down the whole stream for a second. So yeah, apologies. Uh, back there now. OBS was just uh, poo-poo in the bed. Sorry. So yeah, that was uh, a mixture of mine and OBS's fault. So apologies on that one. Uh, but look, that being said, it probably is the right time to... Uh, oh, what's this? More notes coming in. Oh, right. Before we finish up, one more bit of information. Hang on. Uh, Sasha Tavalieri has posted... Uh, Bayern now closing the gap on Liverpool over Xabi Alonso despite Xabi Alonso's initial choice Bayern Munich officials moved quickly these last days with an improved offer so the Spanish coach's side are now leading the race Liverpool who was closing in on choice of Alonso but was also closing in discussions with his entourage dragged his feet a little when it came to getting down to the nitty gritty of negotiations to allow Bayern to regain the lead as announced from the beginning uh, the coach is expected to make his final since the end of the season. So Tasha, Sasha Tavalier is just talking it was arse again. He's literally just said nothing. So one minute he was saying that he was going to Bayern. Now he's saying he hasn't made a decision that Liverpool were dragging their feet a little bit. I'm going to say Sasha Tavalier hasn't got a clue what he's talking about and he's just spoofing like normal. Because uh, in that one post he's gone from Liverpool dragged their feet to Alonso... Staying at Leverkusen to Alonso going to Bayern to Liverpool didn't drag their feet at all. Liverpool were respectful. Liverpool were doing the right things in waiting till he made his decision. So again, uh, I, I mean, I don't rate Sashi Tavalieri at all as a journalist, so I'm not really that fussed about what he posted. Uh, Craig went for an early dip. Not yet, is he? Not yet. Uh, do you think this could affect the contract situation? No. No, I think the contract situation was going to be the same no matter what happened. Um, we're still going to have to sit down with Trent, with Verge and with Mo and figure it out. And I don't know what way those negotiations are going to go. I feel comfortable about the Trent one, but the other two, truly, I don't know. Uh, on a funny note, knowing us, we'll get Julian Nagelsmann with his scooter uh, be a first in the Premier League, said Star Girl. Well, they used to have N'Golo Kante with the Mini, so maybe we'd get uh, Nagelsmann with the scooter. I don't know. Uh, do we think this might be a smoke screen to cool noise until the season is over? Again, I don't I don't know, but I doubt it with the likes of Paul Joyce coming out with it. You know, some journalists I take with a pinch of salt, but Paul Joyce isn't one of them. And if Paul Joyce writes in the Times, I, I take it to be true. Um, certainly a lot more than I believe any nonsense from Sasha Tavalieri. How do they know? Well, it depends who you mean by they. Um... Somebody would have been briefed, obviously. Would I swim in the Fulham swimming pool? Absolutely, yes. If the weather was good enough. Right on the Thames like that? Overlook would be beautiful. Uh, Liverpool's away trip to United. Tickets are a sellout. Of course they are. We love that, Mark. Uh, good night, Michael and Coach Bill as well. Um, and look, my friends, I'm going to say goodnight to you all as well, because obviously I've got to find out a lot of information here uh, over the next 
well, the next few hours, but I will be back tomorrow. Um, I feel like I'll be on at four o'clock tomorrow. So four o'clock tomorrow and half past eight. And the preview will be out at six o'clock. Don't forget, we're going to be announcing the Belfast show next week. We've confirmed that one today. It'll be May 31st. We'd love to see you up there. There may be a Dublin show. We're trying to figure that out still. And we'll have the Cardiff and Liverpool show information for you over the next week. Um, again, thank you for tonight. Thank you for making a, a record-breaking night on the channel on every level. Do hit the subscribe button before you head off. If you haven't done so, it would really be appreciated. And uh, I will see you tomorrow at four o'clock because we'll have a lot to go through and uh, I'll spend that time between now and then getting as much information as I can. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Much love. Bye-bye.